And now, from Austin's leading news station, this is the Channel 7 News 12 o'clock report. Today is Inauguration Day in Texas. A joint session of the Texas Legislature is gathered at the state capitol, and in just a few minutes, Ann Richards will be sworn in as governor. Bob Bullock, already sworn in as lieutenant governor, will show it to you live. Good afternoon, I'm Ken Snow. Before we switch to the capitol, we want to update you on events concerning the Persian Gulf. The confrontation in the Gulf continues, and there are no outward signs of improvement as the countdown is rapidly coming to an end. Here's what's happening at this hour. The U.N. Security Council is meeting to consider a French peace proposal. The U.S. and others do not like it. Iraq is showing no signs of backing down. State-run media there says today Iraq will keep Kuwait forever. And at the White House, the president is described as being grim but determined. He took a walk by himself this morning. We'll have details during our second half hour of coverage today. Now we're ready for the main event, the governor-elect Ann Richards and uh, Lieutenant Governor Bob Bullock, who's just sworn in just a few minutes ago, are the, taking center stage today. Of course, Channel 7 State Affairs reporter Keith Elkins is on hand at the Capitol for that. And Keith, everything seems to be running a little bit early today. Well, it certainly does, Ken. In fact, everything is falling into place like clockwork here, especially the weather. It's an absolutely gorgeous day here on the state capitol grounds where more than 15,000 Texans and representatives of 35 countries have assembled for this inauguration. Now, just a short while ago, Lieutenant Governor Bob Bullock was officially sworn into office. He's now taking center stage. Let's listen in to his official inaugural address. Enjoy the natural environment of this great state that we all love. As a minimum, we must create the world's premier all-response plan to cover every inch of every bay, of every estuary, up and, down, up and down our Texas Gulf Coast. We must make major changes in our criminal justice system because we know that neither criminal and our community is being served by our system today. This agenda, along with other major concerns facing us, will not be easy. Easy was what not won Texas independence on the battlefield, and easy is not what made Texas its potential today as a modern industrial state. And easy is not what brought Texas to elect Bob Bullock Lieutenant Governor of Texas. <laughs> this, this agenda that I speak of will not be solved overnight. I recognize that, and I'm sure that you do. That to paraphrase John Kennedy, 30 years ago in his inaugural address, he said, it may not be finished in the first 100 years, and it may not be finished, ladies and gentlemen, in the first 1,000 days. But let us begin. And I say, let us in Texas begin today. Our accomplishments, Mr. Casabear, will be rewarding. Rewarding for our children and our grandchildren. Rewarding for those of us who care about the natural blessings of this land and rewarding, and for those of us who are involved in a sense of inner peace and pride that comes with knowing that you work diligently in pursuit of high ideals and high ideals. When the days get long and the doing get going gets tough, remember the words of the Apostle Paul when he admonished us to run the race before us with courage, looking always to the author of our faith. And today, I would add to that being aware of the heritage given us by those who went before. On that note, this inaugural would be incomplete if I personally 
fail to give recognition to the years of dedicated service rendered this date by my now predecessor, Lieutenant Governor Bill Hobby. Governor Hobby, the constitutional awesomeness of this office I now assume is enhanced all the more by your legacy. And I pray that I conduct the office with even a small measure of the high ideals that marked every moment that Bill Hobby served as Lieutenant Governor of Texas. In closing, to the people of Texas, my beautiful wife Jan and I say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We love you deeply, and we love this state deeply. And we would hope that you would give us your blessings and your prayers in the hard days ahead. And God bless every one of you, and God bless Bullock and Ann Richards, too. Thank you very much. of office will now be administered to the governor-elect, the Honorable Ann W. Richards, by Chief Justice Thomas R. Phillips. Richards do solemnly swear. I, Ann Willis Richards, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the duties. That I will faithfully execute the duties. Of the office of governor of the state of Texas. Of the office of governor of the state of Texas. And will. <laughs> and will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So help me God. So help me God. that she has been waiting for. It has been a long hill, uphill climb to get to this point. She and her supporters are obviously very pleased, and she will now address it this crowd with her official pleasure. inaugural address. To introduce to you Her Excellency, the Governor of Texas, the Honorable Ann W. Richards. than Bob Bullock as Lieutenant Governor of this state. I 
I do have to say that I will miss seeing my friend Bill Hobby around this Capitol every day. But perhaps we can entice him back now and then. Because I think of no one beyond my parents and my children who have nurtured and cared and loved me in the political sense that Bill Hobby has, and I am forever grateful to him for that. I'm so pleased that my parents and my children can be here to share this day with all of us. Of course, they mean a great deal to me. But it is wonderful to know that their love and affection for me is shared by all of you, by all of you. And so, my good friends, welcome to the first day of the new Texas. I want to extend a welcome also to the official representatives of 35 foreign countries and the governors of the four Mexican border states who have joined us today. And I want to thank all of you for being with us. I hope we're going to see you often here in the Capitol because Texas is a good place to do business. And we want to have the opportunity to do business with you. Eighteen months ago, I stood with uh, many of you just a few hundred yards from here, and I announced my candidacy for governor of Texas. And if you were there, in fact, or in spirit, on that very hot June day, if you gave your time and you gave your energy to the campaign, if you held your ground, and if you continued to believe when the odds seemed long and the outcome uncertain, my gratitude to you is profound. God bless you. Today is a day of celebration. Today we marched up Congress Avenue and we said that we were reclaiming this capital for the people of Texas. We say proudly that the people of Texas are back. And that statement will be given meaning by our actions over the next four years. Because you see today the historians will record that a new administration different from any in the past of Texas began. And 20, 20 or 50 or 100 years from now, school children are going to open their textbooks or perhaps switch on their video text. And they're going to see a picture. They'll see us standing proudly in this bright winter noon and looking through the eyes of a child we will seem as distant and as ancient as the portraits of our ancestors seem to us. Those children will read that on January the 15th, 1991, a woman named Ann Willis Richards took the oath of office as the 45th governor of the state of Texas. Today, the headline has really been written, but the pages that follow are blank. Tomorrow, we begin filling those pages, writing line by line the story 
will be told long after the joy of this day is forgotten. The Reverend Martin Luther King, who was born on this day, said, we have come this far on the strength of a dream. Now our challenge is to transform that dream into reality and fill those pages of history. And we want to fill that history with the story of Texans who came into office envisioning and knowing the possibilities for an era of greatness, and that we were able to breathe life into that vision. Today, we have a vision of a Texas where opportunity knows no race, no gender, no color, a glimpse of the possibilities of what can happen in government if we simply open the doors and let the people in. Now tomorrow, tomorrow we have to build that Texas. Today we have a vision of a Texas with clean air and land and water. A Texas where a strong economy lives in harmony with a safe environment. And tomorrow we're going to begin to build that Texas. Today we have the vision of a Texas where every child receives an education that allows them to claim the full promise of their lives. And tomorrow, we're going to build that Texas. Today, we have a vision of a Texas where every citizen is treated by the government with respect and dignity and honesty, and honesty. One where consumers are protected, where business is nurtured and valued, where good jobs are plentiful, where those in need find compassion and love and help where every decision is measured against the high standard of ethics and true commitment to the public trust. And tomorrow, you see, we've got to get about the business of building that Texas. Because, you see, the people of Texas are back, and they're waiting, and they're watching us. They want to see whether their government can rise above personal interests and rancor and division and bickering and carrying on that does not represent their interests or their agenda. <laughs> Years ago, John Kennedy said that life isn't fair. And life isn't fair. But government absolutely must be. And if tomorrow, if tomorrow we begin with the understanding that government has got to stop telling people what they want and start listening to the people and hearing what the people need, we will make government mean something good in the lives of Texans. There is nothing more fundamentally important to me than the understanding that the admi this administration exists to serve the taxpayers because service to the people is government's bottom line. We are creating a new position in the governor's office. It is going to be a citizen's advocate who will cut through the red tape and the bureaucratic stonewalling who will report to me on those agencies who fail to meet the test of the highest quality of service and efficiency and financial management. I am with you, Lieutenant.
Lieutenant Governor Bullock. We are going to clean this government up, and we are going to make it financially lean and responsible to the people that it serves. Just get ready for it. The oath that I've taken today is mine. But the responsibility, the trust that we have sought and been given, it belongs to all of us. And I hope that we, as we invoke the blessings of God on this adventure, we will ask in the words of that old gospel song that the Lord lift us to higher ground and that we will be wise enough and strong enough to do what we have set out to do. Because when my time in office is finished, I want us to be able to look back together and say that we, not he, not she, but we came to this moment with a vision worthy of a great heritage and we realized that vision in a way that is going to be worthy of our future. And so as we turn the corner on this new millennium, I want us to be able to look forward to see a small child with a textbook thumbing through the pages, coming upon a picture of a group of people standing in a crowd on the Capitol steps in the Capitol lawn, looking out at that child across years and changes that we cannot even begin to imagine. And I want us to read the words beneath that picture that say that on this date, in the year of our Lord, 1991, a new era began in Texas, and I want us to know that what we have started here today will reach out across time to that child and do us honor. God bless you and this attempt to restore this government to the people who need it. Thank you very much. So Ken, it is now official. Bob Bullock is Texas' newest lieutenant governor, and the former Waco no native Dorothy Ann Willis, better known throughout this country as Ann Richards, as Texas' newest governor. You just heard a while ago, Ann Richards told uh, this crowd of 15,000 plus that the people of Texas are back. She says that her administration will represent all Texans and not just a select few. She promised that they are going to clean up Texas state government, making it financially lean. And warning, just get ready, it's going to happen. This has been a very diverse crowd, a lot of different minorities here, American Indians that have been spread throughout the Capitol grounds watching. Several times, Ms. Richards was inter interrupted by applause. This crowd is obviously pleased with what they have been presented during this inaugural celebration so far. This officially marks the conclusion of the swearing-in ceremonies here on the Capitol State grounds of Texas 45th Governor Ann Richards and Lieutenant Governor Bob Bullock. The Democratic duo still have a full plate of inaugural festivities planned throughout the rest of the day and tonight, but as Governor Richards put it, the people of Texas are back, and the beginning of what she has promised will be a new Texas has officially started. Reporting live from the State Capitol grounds, Keith Elkins, Channel 7 News, 12 o'clock report. Ken? Keith, the new governor talked a lot about education in her inaugural address. This afternoon at 2 o'clock, her first major speech is to Texas school children and educators. Does she want to be seen as the state's uh, education governor? 
Yes, she does, Ken. In fact, she has uh, made sure that education took a high role throughout this inauguration. In fact, the very first, one of the very first appointments to the inaugural committee itself was a 16-year-old high school student in Dallas that was put on the inaugural committee by Ann Richards. It is believed to be the first time in Texas history that she's ever done that. As you mentioned, she will be making the satellite addre address to high school students throughout Texas who could not be here today. That also is a, a first for Texas. She invited the Edgewood Independent School District Band to lead off the People's March Parade, the inaugural parade. Of course, Edgewood in San Antonio is the school that has been leading the fight for public school finance reform for a number of years. Ms. Richards says that there's going to be more than talk for resolving the educational problems in the future. Now she has the time in the next four years to try and do something about it. Keith, what happens in the morning at 10 o'clock when the House convenes and the Senate convenes at 11? What, what will be on the agenda first thing? Well, Ken, one of the first things that will be discussed is ethics reform. Uh, Ms. Richards and Bob Bullock both promised throughout their campaigns that they would make sure that there was strong ethics laws in place once they were elected. And they have also said that there would be stronger campaign finance disclosure laws. Just this morning, we are told that the Speaker Pro Tem of the Senate, Senator Bob Glasgow, unveiled the newest ethics bill proposal. That is likely to be introduced on uh, the House floor or the Senate floor tomorrow. The debate should start pretty early. And of course, uh, Ms. Richards has already announced that one of her first priorities, once she has been elected governor, sworn in, will be to enact a, a state lottery, making that an emergency, as well as a uh, ethics proposal. She's given them emergency status. That means that they will rise higher in the scheme of bills here at the legislature. They can be acted on quicker. Ken, just a few personal observations from here at the state capitol, if I might also. Judging by the looks of the faces on this crowd, the Richards administration is offering a renewed hope for a lot of Texans this morning. Several of the spectators have been carrying signs here saying, Anne is the cure and it's our time. There have also been several reminders of the growing tensions in the Middle East. From the thousands of American flags and yellow ribbons that have been displayed here on the Capitol grounds to a parade of school children that have been marching around chanting, we want peace. But perhaps the most chilling reminder is when the first shot of a 19-gun salute was sounded. Just a few steps from here, a man grabbed his wife, threw her to the ground. He did not get back up until one of our photographers told him it was all planned, it was all part of the ceremony. A lot of people are concerned about the Middle East, including the governor-elect and the lieutenant, go the governor and lieutenant governor. And throughout the remainder of the festivities, they will be mentioning the Middle East situation several times throughout the day. Ken? All right, thank you very much. Keith T. Felkins reporting live from the state capitol. Of course, today's inaugural ceremonies began by remembering the Americans, including thousands of Texans who are currently standing face to face with war in the Persian Gulf. There was a prayer service at Camp Mabry at 8 o'clock this morning in honor of the American soldiers there. Governor elect Ann Richards, state officials, military members, and their families attended the hour long service. Richards said that although this is a very special day for her, it's a day overshadowed by sadness and the threat of war. The message at today's prayer service, peace in the Persian Gulf. Well, as you uh, heard earlier, thousands of people turned out for a People's March to the Capitol this inauguration day before the swearing-in started. When Ann Richards arrived at 10 o'clock this morning, she was greeted by marching bands and cheering crowds. Under tight security, she led the way as thousands, maybe up to 20, 25,000 of people followed behind. On the sidelines, a throng of uh, supporters and those who wanted to celebrate with the new governor, she arrived at the Capitol some 35 minutes later. Now, here's a look at what's going to be happening the rest of this afternoon and this evening. At 1 o'clock, there will be an inaugural luncheon on the Capitol grounds. That will be followed at 2 o'clock this afternoon. The governor's education address will take place then, where she'll talk with the school children across the state, as well as educators. That will be carried on home sports entertainment and on PBS stations. The traditional inaugural parade will start at 3 o'clock. And that will run up Congress from 3rd to the Capitol. The fun begins at 8 o'clock tonight with four inaugural balls. They'll be held at Palmer Auditorium, the Irwin Center, the Austin Opry House, and the Driscoll Hotel. By the way, all of those have been sold out. So there's still an afternoon and evening of activities to go. Curtis is standing by now to tell us how the weather's going to be for the rest of the afternoon and evening. Curtis? Well, it looks like it's going to be pretty nice, Ken. Uh, the one thing I have to point out, though, the wind is incredibly rough out there. Uh, northwest right now, 16 to 24 miles per hour. Stepped out on Congress Avenue during the uh, march earlier, and it was uh, really howling out there. So even though the temperature is pretty mild, 59 degrees right now, and it should be up into the low 60s by 3 o'clock if you're heading out to the parade, 
uh, you might want to bundle up just a little bit. Our relative humidity at 50 percent, pressure steady at 29.87, and beautiful sunshine across central Texas. Our forecast for today looks like this. Mostly sunny, windy, and cool. 63 the forecast high, maybe even a degree or two warmer than that. Northwest winds, 15 to 25 and gusty. For tonight, it is going to be getting cold pretty quick with clear skies, a low tomorrow morning of about 35. So if you're going to be out this evening, look for temperatures in the 40s, and uh, the winds will abate somewhat from the north at about 5 to 10. Ken? Thank you, Curtis. We'll get the full forecast for you later on during this hour. And when the special one-hour edition of the 12 o'clock report continues, the latest on the Persian Gulf crisis from the White House and elsewhere, that story is coming up next.